Excuse me, gents. Hey, hey, take it, take it. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are reviewing the Birchta U8. It is a long distance utility type bike. It's a step through. You want to learn more? Well, let's get into it. Now, before we hop into the specs and everything on this bike, these bikes always seem to come with a lot of accessories. And here's what I mean. When you purchase the bike, it's gonna come with a list of accessories. You're gonna get a bike pump for your tires. Here is a phone holder. You get a bike lock. These are all the tools that you need to put the bike together. And it comes with this bike bag that you can attach somewhere on the bike. The Birchda U8 is a class three e-bike, which means we should be able to reach over 20 miles an hour via the half twist throttle right here, your five levels of pedal assist, and your cadence sensor. Currently, you can purchase the Birchda U8 for only $10.99. I also have a discount code for you that I'll be sharing at the end of the video. This bike weighs 81 pounds, but has a payload capacity of 350 pounds. It does only come in a step through, and your average rider height is from 5'2 to 6'2. The Birchda U8 comes in three different colors. You can get it in black, gray, or this white that I have here. With this big battery, they claim that the Birchda U8 can go up to 110 miles on a single battery charge. Now, personally, I'm hoping that it does not do that because that's a long time to be on a bike in one day. I am sure that's putting this bike under the best case scenario, keeping it at the lowest pedal assist levels and all that. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go as fast as I can for as long as I can putting this bike through its worst case scenario. So let's see how it does. The U8 has a 48 volt, 500 watt brushless rear hub motor. It has a peak power of 750 watts and 75 Newton meters of torque. The U8 has a seven speed transmission, a Shimano turning derailleur, and the Shimano thumb shifter. For stopping power, you have the Wuxing mechanical disc brake system. It also has 160 millimeter rotors. For suspension, the forks are spring loaded. It has 80 millimeters of travel. You can adjust the preload settings and lock it out. The tires on this bike are made by Evistone. They are 20 by four inch. They have an aggressive mountain bike pattern and they're puncture resistant. Now let's talk about one of the main features of this bike and that is this battery. It is a 48 volt, 31 and a half amp hours with 1512 watt hours of power. This thing is a beast. Now you can charge it while it's on the bike. Right here is your charging port. You just kind of flip that little tab up and it plug it in right here or you can take this battery off and charge it indoors. Now, I know it looks like it shouldn't come out, but the seat here flips up. Grab your key. It's going to come with two keys. I'm going to put that in there, flip it forward, and you can pull the battery right out. We're going to go ahead and lock that. Now, this is one of those bikes that does take a key to operate it. So when you go out for a ride, you need to make sure you have your key, and you're just going to put it right here, and now you have power to the bike. It does come with a three amp hour charger, which means it's gonna take about 10 to 11 hours to charge this bike. If you purchase this bike, you're gonna to have to reverse how this light fits into this cradle because if you install it the way that it comes to you, your headlight is gonna hit the rack. So just make sure the L bar is down like this, reconnect the light, and you should be good to go. Additional features include, you have metal fenders, you have this quick release seat post. You have this funky seat. It curves up on both sides. We're going we're gonna to see how that is long distance. It does have this padded area here on the back, or you can purchase this with a basket that goes on the rear. It has aluminum pedals and BMX handlebars. Let's go over size and fit. Now the lowest you can put this seat is right there. This is going to be for your 5'2 riders. And then Let's see how far up this can go. Is there any numbers on the back? No, there is not. But I do see a mark where it says highest position. So right there, that is your highest seating position. The thing about these BMX handlebars is you can push them forward and back to make sure that, you know, you can reach it and that it's comfortable for you. When it comes to this back pad, I think it's just for looks. I mean, I don't think I would be wanting to put anybody on the back of this bike. Cockpit operations. On your left-hand side, you have a very hard rubber type uh, grip but it does have the palm rest on it here is your front brake lever here is your light and it has a horn right here is your control panel once you turn the key on the battery and turn it on all you have to do is hold down this power button here in the middle your display fires up and now it's ready to go as you can see here on your display it has your battery indicator this is your speed limit right here or your your speedometer 
This is your pedal assist levels, and this is your trip odometer. By hitting the I button, it bounces between the overall odometer, your max, and your average speed. As you can see, we don't have any of those going on right here. To go up and down pedal assist levels, you're just gonna hit the plus and minus button. Now, one of the cool things about this display is that you can jump inside this display and then go ahead and set it up to either one to three different pedal assist levels, five pedal assist levels, seven pedal assist levels, or even nine different pedal assist levels. This button does not operate the light because your light button is right here. Now, when you turn it on, your headlight's gonna come on and so will your tail light. And here is your horn. The headlight is a nice round headlight. I like the fact that it has those up and down lights and then the one here in the middle. Now, when it comes to your tail light, I like the fact that it is integrated, although it is not a brake light. So it doesn't matter if you hit your, your brakes, it's not gonna get any brighter and it's not gonna get any dimmer. I also wanna point out that there is a USB charging port right under here. This bike also has a walk mode and cruise control. On your right hand side, you have your right half twist throttle. You just turn that to make the bike go forward. Here is your rear brake lever and your thumb shifter. And the way this works is to go down in gear, you just click it and to go up in gear, you just push it with your thumb. Now that we've covered all the features on the bike, let's take it out on the road and see how she performs. We are out here on the 606 here in Chicago. For those who uh, haven't seen my videos before, I know where I do these tests. This is also known as the Bloomingdale Trail. Right now we're in pedal assist zero. Trying to see how easy this bike is to pedal without any power. And we're in gear like four and we're cruising at about nine miles an hour. You can definitely feel the weight of the battery behind you. Hopefully <laughs> I don't have to ride this bike a long time today or a long distance without battery power. Let's start off with testing the throttle. I have it in pedal assist level one. We're gonna see if it's actually dictated by the amount of pedal assist level that you're in. Oh yeah, I can definitely tell that it already is and we are cruising at five miles an hour in pedal assist one, throttle only. Let's go ahead and kick it into two. Two is gonna take you to eight miles an hour. Three, you're cruising at 13. Number four, between three and four is where you really start to feel the uh, power. And we are cruising at 18 miles an hour. Let's see what pedal assist five does. Pedal assist number five has me bouncing right between 24 and 25 miles an hour. So 25 miles an hour is the best we're gonna be able to get out of pedal assist number five. Now we're gonna test the pedal assist. Uh, right now we have it in pedal assist number one. We do have it still in gear number four. And you're only gonna cruise about five miles an hour in pedal assist number one. Let's go ahead and switch it into pedal assist number two. And we're doing about nine miles an hour in pedal assist number two, pedal assist number three. 15 miles an hour in pedal assist number three, bounce to number four. 19 miles an hour in pedal assist number four. So far, no ghost pedaling. Let's go into pedal assist number five. And we are cruising 25 miles an hour in pedal assist number five. There is ghost pedaling, but since this is a cadence sensor, all you gotta do is just slow that tempo, keep your legs moving, and it'll keep you at that 24 to 25 miles an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the uh, speedometer and see if it is accurate. And I can tell you right now, so far it looks like it is. It just takes the GPS a little bit of time to catch up as opposed to the display. But right now it seems like they're both tracking on the same speed. It is time for the throttle test. We're gonna go ahead and see how quick we can hit 25 miles an hour using throttle only. Here we go. Now when it takes off, it doesn't, it's not an aggressive takeoff, but I am feeling like steady power all the way through the push. Boom, 27 seconds. So it's not really fast, but it's also, you don't feel like you're out of control. It's just constant power at a safe speed and a safe rate. Now we're gonna do pedal assist only. We're gonna see how long it takes to get from zero to 25. We have it in gear four so we can take off rather easily. And here we go. We are launching now. Kicking it up some gears. There we go. Now we're gonna use everything. Pedal assist, throttle, all of it. Let's see how quick we can hit 25 miles an hour. Let's go. There, come on, oh, there we go. Woo. I was a leg smoker. Had to stop off at the house, switch out my coat. It's supposed to be about 65 degrees today. It was cooler earlier, but now I just do on this uh, lightweight windbreaker. Now there's a couple things I've already noticed with this bike is that number one, this, this display is hard to see in the sunlight. I mean, I like it. I like the full colorness of it, but in the direct sunlight, it's not the easiest to see. 
Also the seat, it's kind of weird, right? Because it, it has these like wings that pop up on the side. Um, it's supposed to like provide you support on like your, your hips and your, on the outsides of your uh, hips and butt. And it does, but it's just a weird feeling, right? Like I don't hate it. It's just, uh, it's just something definitely different. Mostly the only thing I can hear with this bike are the tires. With this display, this bike does have a lot of functionality on many of the customizations that you can do with it. From changing the various pedal assist levels, tire size, resetting your trip mileage. This bike also comes with an app. I did download the app, but I could not get it to uh, work on the bike. All right, it's time for our off-roading part. Here we go. Ooh, I feel that battery bouncing around in the back. I mean, this bike's not really made for off-road stuff, but we can do it. I mean, right now we're just using throttle only going through. And I can tell that riding it off-road is kind of, oh, there we go. Was definitely holding back some of the, some of the power of that rear motor. Although they do say it has 75 Newton meters of torque, but going through that area right there, it sure didn't feel like it. When we do the hill climb, that'll be our true test on whether this thing has 75 Newton meters of torque or not. It is time for the hill climb. We have it in pedal assist number five. We're gonna try to do throttle only. Let's see how it happens. Let's see how it works. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I don't know. I don't think we're gonna make it. it doesn't feel like we're gonna make it. Oh, <laughs> no. Come on, come on. Come on, there we go. Oh, I think we're gonna make it now. Just had to give it a little help, making it up. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna make it. It should be very easy whenever we do the part where we're just pedaling. All right, now we're gonna do it by using uh, pedal assist. We're just gonna pedal along. It should be pretty easy. Taking off, oh, why is this thing? Oh, it took it a second to get going. There we go. All right. Yeah, like totally easy. Although it does feel like it's not making it as easy as I thought it would, but we're still making it relatively easy. I mean, she's not much of a hill climber, but she'll definitely do. All right, guys, I figured I'd go ahead and do my first mileage check. The battery dropped down to four bars instead of five. That means we should be at 80% battery power. Strava shows that we've gone 15.07 miles and the display is showing the same. So that's a good thing. Now we still have a lot of mileage to go, a lot of battery, a lot of testing. So let's move on. Now here's one thing I've noticed since we've taken off, we're back to five bars again. And so it's one of those kind of things. And this, this bike does have some issues uh, making it up the hills. I mean, we're doing it, but you can feel that the bike is like, oh, not very happy about it. I mean, now that we're in the groove, we're doing just fine. Now, I have been hearing some rattling from the fenders, and that is an easy fix if you just have some nylon washers, and you can prevent that from making any noise. Right now, we are fighting against heavy wind. I figured I'd spend this first part riding into the wind because when uh, it comes to the battery getting low, hopefully I'll be going with the wind as opposed to against it. All right, to give you an example of how strong the wind is, right now we'd have in pedal assist five, we should be doing 25 miles an hour, and, but right now the bike can only do 20 miles an hour fighting against the wind. That's how strong the wind is today. All right, guys, we're doing the brake test, but I gotta start way back here, because I'm fighting the wind. We're trying to get this thing up to 25 miles an hour. There we go. Ooh. 32 feet. Yeah, man, those mechanical brakes. I mean, they work. Just not a huge fan of mechanical brakes. Are they stopping the bike though? Absolutely. Going for round two. We're just picking up the pace. Come on, baby, crank it out. 24. 25. Oh. oh. 36 feet. I gotta tell you, that stopped a lot longer than what I thought it was going to. I thought it was actually gonna stop a lot quicker. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see it, but we're down to three bars right now. Once we hit two bars, we're gonna turn around and head back. But this wind is just killing it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do a sand test. Let's see how far we can get out here. I mean, these tires, I mean, they're 20 by four inch. 
so we shouldn't do too bad. But let's see. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We are just cruising along. Oh, man. This beach is dirty. That's sad. Woo! Let's go. Let's go. Uh oh. Let's go. Oh, I don't. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Wow. So, like, the battery just basically died. We're not even spinning a tire. We just. That's it. Interesting. All right. Let's. Let's walk her back. Yeah, that's that 500 watt motor for you where you're not able to just plow through stuff. We didn't do too bad at first. It'll get you out on the beach. It just won't get you around. I figured with that higher amperage, we would have been good to go, but no, guess not. Excuse me, gents. Hey, I can take it. Hey, guys. All right, guys. It looks like I can barely see it, this display, but it looks like we're down to two bars. So we're definitely turning around. Strava shows that we're at 21.59 miles, and uh, we were fighting against the wind the whole time. So now we're going to go with the wind, and hopefully we'll make it back to the house without any riding this bike without power. <laughs> I know. This thing's going to die from battery. i got to get it home. <laughs> now, we're still fighting some wind, not near as much as we were fighting coming out here. And as you can see, the bike's just cruising at like 23 miles an hour when before... I could only get 20 out of it just because the wind was pushing so hard. And see, now that we're cruising with no wind that we're fighting against, well, now we're doing 24 miles an hour, like no big deal. We definitely lost some distance that we would be able to go by fighting the wind for as long as we did. Thought I had the GoPro on and I didn't. I hit a bump over there and it shut the whole bike off. So the battery bounced up and it turned the bike off. So if you hit a bump really hard, that's one of the things you're going to have to look out for is the fact that it, it could just turn the bike off. But when that happens, just hit your power button and fire it right back up. We're going to see if it does it again. I've got to go over these same bumps. We're going to see if we lose it or if we keep the power. Yeah, we still kept the power. When the direct sunlight's not on this display, it's a really attractive display. I like how the li or the lines are like shooting through. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, video, but uh, those blue lines are like moving forward as you're moving forward. So it kind of looks pretty cool. Now, since this is a big battery, normally I'd be turning up here to go towards the house. I'm now that I'm kind of close to home, or at least I know that I'm like six to eight miles from the house. I am okay with letting this go down to one bar of battery just because of the uh, size of this battery and get it down to its last 20% before I start heading home. The only thing I have to pay attention to is the farther I go away from the route that I want to go home, that means I'm going to have to fight the wind coming back to get to that point. All right, we're going to turn around so we can fight some wind here. We're going to test and see how fast we can go using throttle only with this wind. Right now, it looks like we're holding 19 miles an hour. I've been going up and down Lakeshore Trail. Uh, we finally made it down to one battery. We are at 31.82 miles. We're going to go ahead. We're going to head home from here, and then we should be able to uh, make it home. No problem. Whoa. Whoa, no. Oh, my gosh. The wind we are fighting. This was not what I was hoping for. Oh, my gosh. Woo, those wind gusts. Well, now, now I'm a little concerned. If I got to fight wind like that all the way back home, it's going to be an issue. All right, we're here on the 606. We are riding into the wind, but we are still doing 18 to 19 miles an hour. We're just using throttle only at the moment. I wanted to see how it would do, and we still have the one bar right there. Like I said, it's super hard to see with the sunlight out, but oh, there we go. Now we're in the, uh, now we're in the shade, so you can see kind of what's going on. Right now we have it on full throttle. We're only doing 15 miles an hour. The wind is, I mean, we're fighting wind pretty good right now, but it also has to do with the battery getting a lot lower. And only about now am I feeling it on the seat. So we've done a good, you know, coming up on 40 miles with, uh, with this seat. And uh, it's done a lot better than what I thought it would. Well, in true fashion, we're going to ride this thing till it's about dead. So we're going to turn around as uh, we're almost to the house. So we're going to take it until the battery starts flashing, the battery indicator, and then, uh, and then we'll bring it back. All right, clearly it was the wind that was causing us not to go as fast. Right now we are doing 22 miles an hour throttle only, and uh, we're just moving right along. Okay, at this point, I am now three miles from the house. I'm going to turn around. I mean, this thing's just going, which is, I mean, it's awesome, but yowza. Oh, man, I forgot how rough the wind was. 
All right, I can tell the battery's getting really low. We have it in pedal assist number five, and we're doing like 13 miles an hour. So we're about getting to the end of it. And at this point, I mean, since I still have about like two and a half miles or almost three to make it home, well, that's the goal. Oh my gosh. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, this hill about killed it. Oh, oh gosh. Woo. That was a lot of leg power. Uh-oh. I'm feeling like we might have lost it. I don't think there's any power going to this bike. I got to start kicking it down in gear. I mean, although it's still lit up, still a single bar. But I'm not getting, look, if I just do throttle only, it's going to come to a stop. Oh, no. Pushed it too far. I was hoping that the battery indicator would, like, flash or something like that to give me an idea that it was about out of battery or, like, an E9 code or something. Nope. Nothing. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to pull over, figure out how far we went, get this bike home, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. I wanted to go over a couple of features that I didn't talk about yesterday. This bike has an app that comes with it. And once you download this app right there, Yolani bike, you can connect it to your bike. And how you do that, you would think that you would hit the, the gears to do it, but no, there's a little Bluetooth button. You click it. When it pops up, it says Yolan, you connect it, and it really easily connects to the bike. And as you can see, it shows the volts right here, which really would have came in handy yesterday when I could see how much voltage was going to the bike. But I wasn't able to figure out how to connect the app, and now I know how by hitting this button instead of hitting this, because when you use this one, it wants to take you to a QR code, and this display does not produce one. So you have to connect it through Bluetooth. With this app, you can change your pedal assist levels on the fly. As you can see, they're changing on the display. I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, they are. Shows your speed, overall odometer, your trip, 53, I think. There should be. I'm pretty sure I saw a way where I could change my speedometer, or reset. Oh, here we go. Reset. Trip. Clear the trip. All right, let's see if it did it. Bounce back. I don't know how to bounce back. How do we bounce back? Yikes. Doesn't, uh, doesn't show us how to bounce back. Ooh, limit speed. Can we bump it up anymore? No. Oh, we can. I wonder if we get this bike faster than 25 miles an hour. We're going to find out here in a second. Let's, uh, I guess I got to get back out and go back in. That's the only way. Yep, keep only while using. Got the app thing. All right, now it's showing that we need to reconnect to the bike. I'm going to show you how that works. Right here, it's showing the different things. Yolan, boom. And we'll connect right back into the bike. There we go. Trip meter has been set to zero. Let's see how this map works. All right, so the map shows you how much voltage, which, like I said, would have came in handy yesterday. And uh, But I don't see the map. Let's see if it'll show up when we start riding. Uh, I don't see the map feature working. But all this information down below is. So I could see where there is some use, definitely for changing some of your, uh, your parameters, resetting your trip. But you can also reset your trip without using the app. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right now it shows we have one mile on the bike. If we hold the I and the minus button and hold them down simultaneously for three seconds, it resets it. All right, let me show you the one last feature. To get the cruise control to work, well, you're just going to get at the speed that you want. We're going to go ahead and throttle up here. And then all you're going to do is hold down the minus button. And it should hold it. And there we go. We're cruising at 15 and a half miles an hour. Now, if you want to get out of the cruise control, well, all you have to do is either pedal, hit the brakes, or hit the throttle. We have unlocked the bike. I wanted to see if it would go faster than 25 miles an hour. Right now it's showing 25, 4, 25, 6. So it's, it's not going to go any faster than the 25 miles an hour, no matter what speed setting you put it on. All right, back to the video. All right, guys, I made it back. Now, I did have to ride this bike two miles, approximately two miles, with no power or any assist going to the bike. Um, I do not recommend. That was not fun at all, especially because I was riding into a headwind. Now, Strava says that we went 41.91 miles, so we almost made it 42. I think that's really, really good for a bike that was 
fighting into the wind as long as we were. I pretty much know for a fact that this bike will make it a lot longer distance if we weren't fighting those winds today. Let's talk about this seat. Yeah, it is shaped weird and it looks funny, but it did a really good job with the with comfort until I got to about 38, 39 miles, and then I started to feel it. So it's gonna be up to you whether you wanna trade this seat out or not. Me, I mean, the only reason I would do it is just because I would get one that looks better, that a better looking one, and it just wouldn't look as odd. But really, that's just something that, that's just a me thing, it didn't have to be a you thing, because the seat is comfortable enough to where you could go a long distance without having to change it out. Now, when it comes to the display, the display, you know, with it being color, it looks really good, except when you're in bright sunlight, direct sunlight, you're gonna have a hard time seeing it. Many times I'd have to look closer to the display to make sure I could see what our battery power level was. Also, when it came to the distance on that battery indicator, well, it's supposed to get to a part where it's empty and it'll flash. You know, it doesn't show any bars, but it'll flash for you. Well, we ran out of assistance to the bike when we had one bar. Now we had that one bar for quite a while before we lost that power. So here's the thing, you know that if in the worst case scenario, you're gonna get at least 41 miles out of this bike. And I think that if you're using this for like a commuter or a utility bike, well, that's an awful long distance that you can go on one battery, especially at this price. Besides that, the brakes were meh. I mean, they're mechanical brakes. There's not much you're gonna get out of those, but overall, I had no issues with this ride today. Now, if you're looking at the Birch the U8 to purchase, we'll go ahead, use my link down below. It'll be in the description. That'll take you directly where you need to be. Um, if you do decide to get one, yeah, that does help the channel out so that I can keep putting out videos for you guys and it doesn't cost you any extra in the process. Now, if you saw any of like the accessories that I had, like, you know, the foldy lock or the slide or the mirror or my base camp helmet, those links will also be in the description below. Well, that's it. That's my review on the Birchta U8. And I wanna thank you for watching. So until I see you again, enjoy the ride.